Hello and welcome to On Another Planet with me, Emma Jones and Robbie Savage. This week we're going to talk all things FA Cup and unfortunately we are going to have to discuss Michael Clegg's first defeat at Macclesfield FC. Robbie, I'm sorry because I know how disappointed you'll be, especially at this stage in the season. So let's get straight into it. How was Michael after that defeat at the weekend? You know, as just on the previous podcast, um, you know, I didn't speak to the manager so Sunday to let motions die down. Um, I was at Reading um, watching Charlie um, beat Cambridge 4 0. So I was keeping an eye on it all the way through um, social media. Um, nil nil at half time. Um, lost the game 1 0. John Rooney straight up the card. That'll be a three game band start from next Saturday because it takes seven days in non league for that band to. Um, to come into effect um, but yeah before the game we were up it's a tough place to go um, you'd have probably taken a point to keep the momentum um, did a good side but we didn't perform as we could I'm led to believe but the manager was calm you know where I've learned Jones is you usually have to see because of the defeat for Macclesfield at these levels is like Man City getting beat that's what it's like so Usually, uh, I'd have been on the phone, emotion high, but I've learned about the process to think, do you know what? Let everybody calm down, emotions were high. Sunday morning, we spoke, you know, and the manager's coming in this morning. We're going to go through on, on and analyse the game. We got a couple of injuries. Um, we had a red card, but John can play. We've got, you know, that's going forward with 10 games to go in the league now and the transfer window closing next Thursday, or we've done Thursday. We've now got to have a process in place, right? You've got a few injuries. John Rooney's got a three-game ban. Alex Curran, who's our top scorer, 21 goals, has been out for four or five weeks, got another couple of weeks. And in your number 10 position, the way we play, John Rooney's got 20 goals. Alex Curran's got 21 goals. So in the most important part of the season, there's 41 goals out of the side there. So do we change system? You know, do we try and bring it along number 10? But then, if, or do we try and get number 10 in? But if you do that, at this stage of the season now, you know, is it, are we going to have to pay over the odds like we usually have to for the number 10? Or do we change it? Do we go to a 4-3-3? Um, so there's so many dilemmas. And at this stage now, as I mentioned last week, players become available. Teams who can't get relegated or can't get promoted. If you try and get, you know, a, a, a gem in. We got um, a defender in from FC United um, last week, Dan Lafferty. Um, because Lewis Fensum, who's played the majority of the game, um, fractured his collarbone, so he's been out. So we brought a defender in. Um, and I think what we've got to think now, Jonesy, was sick plate with one side outside the playoffs, one place outside the playoffs. Um, it's so tight. I'm looking at the league table now. Ashton United are in 31 games, 52 points. We're, on, we're in six, 30 games, 53 points. But then the playoff place hit. Warrington in second, 62 points, play 33. Hyde played 34, 60 points. Marine. 33, 58 points, and guys in 32, 55 points. So, so high. We go to Stafford Rangers tomorrow um, with one of our games in hand, a huge game. Um, but we have to we have to start winning games. Listen, managed that three games. Two great wins, one against Marie, one in the trophy to get us to the semi-final, uh, where we got a gate set we can talk about after this. Um, but McCarthy will get beat, and it's how we react. You know, you mentioned that the uh, the transfer window is going to close next Thursday, and you have to make these decisions. How imminently do they need to be made in terms of do you change system? Do you bring players in? Yeah. As the head of football, I have to control the budget for my partner, Rob. So, because we're the club where we put majority of players on contracts, 
when the new manager comes in, the manager's being honest, open, transparent with players, and if those players aren't part of his plans, which he's told a few, and then because of the daytime trading model, we know we have had to pay more for players to get to miss two mornings a week. So their monetary income from McIlfield will be far more than most teams at these levels because they train Nike. So they don't have to miss mornings. And if those players aren't contracts, for instance, now we've had inquiries for two, three players who are on contracts to go on loan, but they will play a percentage of the loan. They can't play pay the full amount. So we're going to have a difference. So getting any money in now for those players will go towards new players if we can. So it's such a fine balance in that because the budget next. You know, we brought in uh, we brought in Dan Sweeney, one of our ex players. Um, you know, we paid a transfer fee and that's taken us, you know, over the budget. So now we have to balance the book. So if anybody comes in now, players are gonna have to go out first. But then then if players are available now and there'll be a few teams facing those players, do you get the players in first, hoping the players will go out, or do you make sure the players have gone out first before you bring those players in. The worry with that is, if you wait, that player could go somewhere else. So if you bring the player in, and then the player going out falls through, then you again, miles over budget. So it's such a fine balance, and it's not as easy as people think. But now we're in a real critical time of the season. One, one place outside the playoffs, 10 games to go, games in hand. I'd drive the punch in the back now, Jonesy and a FA Trophy semi-final. So, you know, it's it's a great, exciting state. Emotions are high, but we're going to have to sit down with the manager after after this podcast, and then we're going to go through it. Well, speaking about that, Robbie, you obviously play Gateshead on April the 6th. With the transfer window closing next Thursday, what's the situation there in terms of players actually being available to play in the club? Um, yeah. So now the players coming in, obviously the lead, we've got to try and get promoted, try and get in those players. So it had massive debate last week onto the podcast when I said, right now I take a Wembley place and if you were guaranteed all shit last year, that's changed. <laughs> that's changed. So we'll, we'll focus on getting us um, promoted because if you listen to some Bates head fans sold from media they put their place at Wembley already you know again I would have wanted Macclesfield at home any of the three teams left that was the perfect yeah. draw um, but we can't be underestimated we're a very very good side uh, we believe we've got a chance going up there to, to you know it's a fantastic pitch not great viewing for fans because it's a running back around um, but we believe we've got a chance. If you listen to everybody else, get to the other line. Um, but bringing players in, we've got to make sure that players coming in and cup tight. Obviously, in the semi-final stage, that will be quite rare if you can find a player now of real, real quality. You can improve the 11 to come in now. Either those are contracted or they'll be cup tight. So, again, <laughs> What player are you going to find now that can improve your 11? Who, who is a cup tied or not on a contract? And if those players are on a contract, you know, we've we've been quoted for player this season, at some point of the season, anything between thirds and £90,000 to sign from, from clubs. And it's at step three football. Listen, we've got a record transfer city for one of our players, to Chesterfield or James Bedder, who's been brilliant. Um, but the reason why that was is because, you know, the, the the amount of, you know, money he was on here enabled him to go and get an unbelievable offer at, at Chesterfield who looked like they are going to win the National League and he was accustomed to daytime training. But we're getting quoted for players um, who train two nights a week, anything between thirty and £90,000. Even at this stage of the that season, means with you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket and give them your weekly wage. That's <laughs> yeah. well, we won't do it. We won't do it. Um, we believe we've got an unbelievable squad. Um, 
But what can hurt us right now is, you know, we got one or two players carrying injuries who were playing through the pain barrier. Um, John Ridley is going to be out. Alex Curran is probably two or three weeks away. Um, we had Brandon Lee going off with the hamstring. Mendy's hurt his knee. So again, we've got quite a small squad as it is. So it's just a fine balance of do you just bring players in for numbers, the depth, or do you bring players in who can improve the 11? So, yeah, it's going to be an important after this. Um, and a huge, huge game tomorrow, Jones, against Stafford Rangers. I, I know you've got to get to that meeting shortly, and that's a priority. But just very quickly, how many players are you currently tracking right now? So we've got... Um, We've got Alice at the department. Oh, the manager's slot in. Oh, hi, Gather. Michael. Come Gather. here. Gather. You're live on the podcast. <laughs> Please do not Gather swear. <laughs> hi, Gather. Michael. My name's Emma. Oh, my. All right. Lovely to meet you, darling. Are you enjoying you Are you too. enjoying your time over at Mark? Yeah, yeah, Craig. Yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, yeah. good. It's no, been really good. Nothing yeah. like putting you in really the hot seat, it. eh? <laughs> nothing like putting you in the hot seat. Oh, yeah, it's, it's always a bit of pressure here. <laughs> so just a quick one, Jonesy, this is, this is our podcast. So I was just explaining to Jonesy, now we've got a meeting about um, players coming in and players going out. Michael's five of the game, I think, is against Bates wow. in, in non-league football. So it's a process of bringing players in now, but players go out, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, really tough. Um, obviously, with the playoffs coming as well and not knowing what league you're going to necessarily be in and, and their lads now and really short-term deals comfortable where they are and so it's then deciding if they improve or short-term or long-term and I think that's probably what we mean today. And I guess the other thing you have to consider as well, Michael, is how quickly they are going to fit in with the other members of your squad because the personality is as important as their talent, is it not? Yeah, but we've always been massive on that. Um, they do away from football it all kind of affects what goes on you know when they come in with us so yeah that's a massive thing obviously we have a few red slags what we're trying to stay away from which we're keeping out but I think ultimately we know what type of football team we want to be and if could be, bring people in who can improve us will always look to do that well Robbie speaks very highly of you Michael and obviously you've had a few good games uh, to kickstart your time over at Mac unlucky and unfortunate this weekend can we just quickly get your post-match analysis on on what didn't quite click for Mac at the weekend I think obviously goals change games and we missed a couple of big chances first half and then we just had like three minutes of madness and we struggled to recover from that um, works on Tough place to go. We were under no illusions when we went there, how tough it would be. And I think when you go, you definitely need 11 men and you definitely need your A game. And we didn't quite do that. Um, and then, I mean, the lads showed character last 35 minutes with 10 men because game could have got away with it. But we always looked like we might threaten, but just weren't to be. Uh, but at this level, you can't sulk. You've got another game Tuesday, so just got to look forward to that now. Absolutely. And we've just been chatting to Robbie about, obviously, the FA Trophy and what a crucial stage of the season you're at in terms of the league as well, Michael. Without putting you under too much pressure, what are your hopes for the remainder of the season? I, I mean, it's pretty clear to me when, when you're at a club of this side, you've got to win every game. I think up until they get, well, we get where we want to go, I think every single football match we've got to be looking at that that we've got to win. It. It's as simple as that, really. Um it's probably not going to be that easy to do that, but but that's what we want to what we want to do. Every time we go on the pitch, we want to win every game, so we'll always prep for that as well as we can. George, uh, looks like that. George, I just quit with Michael's here. The narrative behind Mike before Michael, because Michael played against our teams, um, but Warren Ireland, who was second at the minute, it was a it was a big decision for Michael to move because Warren's he's done unbelievably well. The budget was nowhere near ours and for him to get Warren to where they were but that's why we went for Michael but I think Michael's been surprised of the narrative behind Michael before he came here the stories the rumours what we're all about I think you'd be pleasantly surprised that we're just two lads that we yeah I'm, listen I heard all kinds of nonsense before I before I come in and then obviously Saturday was my first loss so that would have been the first time of hearing what I'd heard before I so I was like, 
Saturday afternoon, kind of text off Rob the German about nine o'clock. You know, unlucky today, maybe see you next week. And then one off to have on Sunday morning, say, enjoy football with your lads. And if you want to catch up at any point, give us a call. If not, I'll see you Monday or Tuesday. Are you sure Robbie Savage said that? Sent that? <laughs> yeah, well, but the narrative I'm sure that Michael heard, you know, and I've learned, I think we had a process in place, I've discussed um, Gaffer on, on this podcast before about what went and where, the emotion after the game is high, you know, so Michael walks his dog early on, a, on uh, about seven o'clock in the morning, I rolls up work, so I get texts. But I suppose the narrative he's heard it, I go off on one if we get beat, but listen, it was a calm. What do we need? What happened? It was fine, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was just nothing I'm not used to. Um, but obviously, you're going to win a story to, with Macclesfield. We've heard them, but we just treat everyone out with fine and, and we just judged it as we come well, in. Well, Michael, I think it's evident, even from you just being thrown onto this podcast, that you handle pressure very well. So thank you so much for joining us. One more question, <laughs> a really, nice a really important question. What dog have you got? Um, a working cocker. Yeah, and a oh, I'm always out with well, Boy, get him. What's his name? Eddie. We 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 were lucky to be honest. We got given him about six months old. One of my mates started working oh. away unexpected, so he just landed on my door, and we've had him ever since. Did you say he's called Teddy? Yeah, I've got a Teddy too. Oh, oh here we go. Oh <laughs> yes, the Teddy Club, Michael. It's it's been an absolute pleasure. Best of luck for the FA Trophy and for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Robbie, as well. Look, do not go anywhere because very shortly we are going to be joined by Planet Sports' James Holland to discuss all yep. the FA Cup action from the weekend. James, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm all good, thanks. Cheers for having me on, guys. Are you sure you're all good because you're a Sheffield United fan? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. It's been a tough season, to say the least. Can't wait for next season to start already. <laughs> In the Championship. Oh, wow. Yeah, most likely. It's a brutal Mate. start. <laughs> uh, Robbie huffing oh. and puffing there like you're not thinking the same. Top of the league, Leeds, are you? Oh, you're going to swap places? Yes, we oh. are. <laughs> yeah, can I ask you that, James? Sorry to get brutal and go straight in, but do you think that Leeds United are one of the sides that are going to be swapping places with you? Yeah, so I would say Leeds and Leicester, definitely. And I would quite like to see Ipswich come up as well for a bit of a change. Oh. Mm. Ipswich are doing my head in, James. They just will not leave us alone. They're always just there over our shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to remember when they were last in the Premier League. So, it, you know, it'd be nice to see them come up with Leeds and Leicester, two, two teams that should be in the Prem, really. Um, and, yeah, unfortunately, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be going down and hopefully looking to come back up next season. Look, James, we'll talk FA Cup with you very shortly, but I just want to ask, when you look at this Sheffield United side, genuinely... Do you think you'll be able to bounce back up again? I mean, we've got some very good uh, quality championship players. Uh, Hamer, John Egan, McBurney, if he can stay fit. So if we can keep most of the squad together, I think we can get the playoffs. I'm not sure about automatic. I doubt we'll be able to do a Leeds or a Leicester. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of keeping the squad together. The trouble is, you know, your best players might get picked off by Premier League teams. I know not a lot of them are impressed but we could get some players who leave. So I would like to think playoffs, but we'll see. It's going to be very interesting, that's for sure. Keep the manager as well. Yes, yeah. So there's been a bit of talk about changing things up and going for a completely different formation and new manager and stuff. But I would say you've got to stick with Wilder. He's a club legend. What he did yeah. last time, getting us promoted. And also, he knows what he's doing at this level. Um, so I'd like to see him stay. Definitely got to give him an opportunity. Right then, James, let's talk about your game of the weekend. Obviously, Fulham had a right result against Spurs, didn't they? But we really want to focus on the FA Cup because what a weekend of FA Cup action it was. What was your game of the weekend, James? Well, yeah, like you say, there was quite a few to choose from, but I've gone for uh, Coventry Wolves. Um, an amazing, amazing game right down to the last minute. You know, Coventry have a love affair with the FA Cup, it seems, and they've done it again. You know, a top 10 Premier League side, um, 100th minute equaliser I think it was from Hadji Wright the composure the stamina just the drive to win that game absolutely incredible and it just shows you the magic of the cup doesn't it that results like that yeah you could see like in the stands the away supporters absolutely incredible um, 
you know, to do it in Wolves' backyard as well just makes it even more impressive. Um, and now they've got a semi-final at Wembley against Man United, you know, to show for it. Absolutely incredible. And who knows? Who knows? Who who knows? Well, Robbie, what do you think? Could Coventry get the job done against Man United, truthfully? Well, it's got Mark Robbins. If you remember, Nottingham Forest to land us, Alex. The goal he scored. Now he's going to beat, beat Manchester United at Wembley in a, in a semi-final. Just a quick one on the game. You know, on a on a phone and show I do on the radio, we had the father and son. You know, the boy who went on the pitch and got the shirt. So his father phoned um, the show I do uh, on the weekend and was telling about how he's got the shirt. He went on the pitch and the father oh. said, listen, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, it's it's on you. Um, and, and the words were like, well, if you go on, and you get banned, but this is the chance you took. <laughs> 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 uh, um, but he's got the shirt. Listen, obviously you don't say to people go on the pitch, obviously, but the young and he got the shirt. It's made his you know, dreams come true, and it worked out well in the end. And what when it worked for Coventry, you know, um, to score two goals so late, and. I think it was a draw they probably wanted. Manchester United, City was the one to stay clear of. Chelsea, Man City, a good game. That's a great pub tie because Chelsea uh, have drawn against City twice. Manchester United would have wanted Coventry, I think, and Coventry would have wanted Manchester United. And Mark Robin, you know, when jobs of managers under pressure, Mark Robin is never mentioned. You know, James will t- tell you as well. He has done an unbelievable job, Mark Robin, at Coventry, and it's. 3-2, was it, when they when they won the, the, the FA Cup game, 1987, was it? 1987, um, yeah. Um, and they've got a chance against Manchester United. But will they do it, do you think? No, you'd fancy Manchester United, especially after yesterday. Um, that's my game of the weekend. Uh, what a game, one of the best cup ties we've seen. Uh, Men to end stuff, I thought, 10 hour substitution for brilliant. Anthony and Ahmad getting the goals. Bruno Fernandes played a centre half, two defenders on the pitch, went for it. Um, and my partner, Michael Rob, went to the game with his, with, his, with his kids and he said that it was one of the best atmospheres he's witnessed. And I think that's um, is it back to back home wins um, against Klopp, 10 Hags had. So, um, you know, so they've, it was a great game, a great game. And the big question is now if Manchester United win the FA Cup, and finish in the Chapman's League place. What happens to Ted Hyde? That's a good one for you, Jim. Will he keep his job? I think he should have. You know, people say they might have made a decision already, but the coefficient key, you know, as it stands, I think it's um, Italy, Germany, England, um, and you've got to finish in the top two in the coefficient to have an extra place in the Chapman's League. With the teams progressing from England, I think... England will finish in the first or second. So I think fifth place in the, um, will get at his league place. So I think Manchester United still got a realistic possibility of finishing fifth. Um, so if they win an FA Cup and finish in the Champions League places, would that equate to a good season for Ten Hag then? Yeah, I think that is the best possible outcome of this season after the disappointments in the Champions League, the League Cup, and they've looked... They're just so hard to predict. They can be amazing or struggle in a game against a poor team. It's so unpredictable. But I would say they've probably got to give Ten Hag a chance under Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the new era, if they get Champions League football and if they win the FA Cup. I think he deserves a season. But whether that will happen, who knows? And they're already looking at De Zerbi, Nagelsmann. They've been surprising links with Southgate. So I think they are casting the net out there already. Um, but yeah, I agree. You know, if they get top four in the FA Cup, I've got a quick question for you two. John, seriously, John, you know, you do interviews, James, I'm sure you do. What did you make of Jurgen Klopp after the game in that interview? Um, um, I, I don't know which um, network or platform the interview Yeah, it was on Viaplay. It was Viaplay. Uh, how would you put yourself, if you're in that situation, What would? how have you reacted? Emma, you first. What, if I was Klopp or the person doing the interview? The person doing the interview. I honestly think that that job being 
a, a pitch side reporter is one of the most difficult jobs because you are meeting a manager when emotions are high um, after a defeat like that. And in that situation, you are expected to ask the questions that people want the answers to. So you are put in a very difficult situation because you are criticised by fans and viewers who are watching if you don't ask the questions that they want the answers to. But then you also know that you run the risk of rubbing a manager up the wrong way if you do ask them questions and if it touches a nerve. And I think we all know that Klopp can be quite an emotional person, understandably, because there's a lot at stake. You know, this is his farewell season. He'd have loved to have been able to do the quadruple, wouldn't he? And I can see it from both points of view. I think Klopp is really, really passionate. But I think being a reporter, you're doing your job. You're doing the right thing by asking the questions. You can't you can't blame them for asking the question. What do you think, James? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think Klopp is loved by Liverpool fans and a lot of neutrals like like the passion and stuff like that. But the one way he annoys people is with these really, really bitter interviews every now and again. And it happened at Dortmund when he was coming towards the end of his spell at Dortmund, he started snapping out at reporters. And that's how people could tell he was coming towards the end of his tether with Liverpool. He seems to get a bit bitter sometimes. And I don't know how I would have reacted. Like, like Emma said, you know, you've got to ask those questions, but I don't know, it's a bit brutal the way he's snapping out and, and things like that. It's it's not nice to see, really. But he's an emotional guy, and it was an emotional game. So, just finally, who do you think is going to come out as the FA Cup winners? Tough question. I don't think you can look past Man City. To be honest, I think they've been here before. Probably be a repeat of last year's final. You know, Manchester derby in the final, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, personally, I think City will. I don't think they'll win the league. I think Liverpool will win the league, but I think Man City will win the FA Cup. Um, yeah, that's my shout. Liverpool are with the league. I think so. Yeah. That would what well, fair wall that would be for Jurgen Klopp. Listen, he's an emotional guy, and as have you have you discussed? If they win the league, wow, what an achievement that would be, especially against this Man City side. Yeah. Man City are relentless, and I think Man City will win the FA Cup. I think it'll be a repeat of last year's final, City United, which was, um, you know an amazing occasion, but Liverpool to win. Well, I think City I think City will do the double trouble. Really? Oh double. really? You do, yeah. Uh, yeah. right, well well James, have you enjoyed your debut here on On Another Planet? Yeah, yeah, it's been brilliant. Cheers for having me on. We've not completely bored you to death. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> well it's been an absolute pleasure having you join us. Thank you so much, James. Cheers, yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Robbie, as always. And thank you for joining us here on On Another Planet. We'll be back same time next week. See you then.